Hi there, welcome back. I've made some more progress on this one. The first thing you'll notice is I've got a bit of that uh, surgical tape or medical tape on here. It's that uh, cloth tape. What I've managed to do is I've taken one of the legs of the uh, lamp and I've um, made a loop on there and it's now properly connected to this piece of chassis, this metal. This is the ground which is made over here with that rather ugly blob of solder in one of the wires coming in. The reason is that there's no actual chassis connection to this section, so they've made it there. So that lamp is getting its positive from there. And then the other one goes around the edge here and it connects to where the wire was coming out of here. And uh, so we've got the two dial bulbs uh, working well now. But a lot more has happened and I'll very briefly show you and then we'll go into what I've been waiting to do for a while, which is the alignment. Without going too far into it, you may notice that the chassis has uh, actually looking quite a bit better. I've done a full cleanup and I'll show you that in detail. So um, I'm actually not too unhappy with the result. There are a few things there that I just couldn't do, but um, it's looking a lot better. This radio, like uh, most of the American ones, uses 455 kilohertz. That's what I've got here, a 455 kilohertz carrier. The amplitude is about 2 millivolts. I'll show you why in a minute. There is modulation, 30% modulation of 600 hertz tone. You can use basically whatever you want there. So what we've got here is a 455 kilohertz carrier. Amplitude, 2 millivolts RMS for now. And on it, is modulated a tone, an audible tone, which we should be able to hear if it goes through the radio. Now, if I click that on there, it's actually coming through, but where is it coming to? They actually tell us to put one loop over the waveguide. I've got this um, AM antenna that I've built before. It's quite a few <laughs> loops more than one, but it should do. And what you do is you put it over this waveguide here, the waveguide is uh, that black thing down the middle. It's basically a, an AM a ferrite antenna. You put it across here, and if you put this on one of the AM bands, you should hear the tone coming through. The instructions tell us to connect one loop coupled loosely to broadcast wave magnet, input signal frequency 455 kilocycles on broadcast band, Set the dial at 1600 kilocycles and then trimmers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10 to align the IF. Well, we can do that. We put this on and we can hear it, but this thing's actually on long wave. If I put it on medium wave or broadcast band, I have to actually up the amplitude tenfold. And I don't think we need to do that because I've tried it actually, I'm cheating. Put it back to two millivolts and put it back to long wave. What I've found is the long wave is actually a lot more sensitive than the uh, medium wave because there's a lot less noise. So I'll do exactly the same. I will adjust it to the end of the dial, put the uh, tuner to the end of the dial. It's on long wave and I'm going to show you something. This was really surprising. The cause you're supposed to adjust, let me put that sound off for a while. Let's take off modulation. The cause you're supposed to adjust are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8 and 10. That's the transformer numbers. I'll show you where they are. It's like this. T1, T2, T4, T5, T7, T8, and T10. So those are all the cores for the uh, AM IF. And this is the tool that fits on all of them quite conveniently. And I'm going to show you what the result is. I'm going to switch on the um, AC voltmeter. Let's give it a tone. We can adjust the volume to where we want. I've got the uh, signal coming in actually less than, it's now at 1.4 millivolts RMS. 
those multiple cores here obviously have an effect. Now watch this. That's where it is. I'm going to do T1. Perfectly aligned as it was. T2. Perfectly aligned where it was. Let's carry on. Exactly where it was. Back to where it was. Again, back to where it was. And again. And there we are. And you know what? I don't think I got anything out of that. I think these guys were absolutely perfect. Now it's always satisfying to get a huge jump when you make these adjustments, but this guy was completely perfectly aligned. As far as the AMIF was concerned, I couldn't make any improvement on it, which is amazing considering this thing's probably never been touched. However, obviously I haven't changed any transistors, I've just cleaned them, I cleaned the legs. I haven't changed any capacitors that affect the IF because those are mostly ceramic or foil. So it's not surprising, but yeah, it is. It is surprising. I mean, something should have changed over the years and it looks like it hasn't. So the next step is to actually take it one step further and we're going to look at adjusting the, um, the RF, making sure the RF is uh, well aligned. And the beauty of it is that practically all the tests use an externally induced antenna signal. In other words, you don't need to connect the uh, input signal anywhere in there. It's over here. And in the case of shortwave, you extend the, uh, or you pull out the uh, shortwave antenna in here, and you put this thing parallel to it, or is it parallel? I'll check. And you don't need to go into the radio at all. So your radio is actually receiving a proper antenna signal, as opposed to receiving a signal from a signal generator, and you have to worry about impedance matching and all that jazz. I love it. I think it's great. Now we're going to set the long wave RF. The first thing to do is to adjust the 160 kilohertz position. So point number two, one turn coupled loosely. So that's the same thing. 160 kilohertz, set it to long wave. We set the dial at 160. You'll just have to trust me that I'm doing that. There's actually a blip on there. So it's set to 160. We rock the gang and adjust 5E. And 5E is this guy over here. And they tell us to rock it while we're setting the adjustment. But we'll just check it on the um, AC voltmeter as well. So oscillator on. We can barely hear it. And if I tune away, okay, that's where it is. Actually, the peak is more like on 150 than 160. So what I'm going to do is put it on 160 exactly. And now we'll adjust this guy. There we go. I really, I really don't know what rocking the gang means, but I think this is what they mean, that if you just move it slightly away. There we go. Yeah. Okay, if you move it slightly away, you can see that it's perfectly aligned. All right, that one is done. Now they tell us to set the signal generator to 400 kilohertz, which we've done. And of course, we need to tune it to 400, which is practically at the top. There's 400. 
see the volume here. I don't hear anything. Oh, it's a bit low. So at 400, I don't hear it. And they tell me to adjust 5D. And 5D, according to the schematics there, is that guy over there. It's the uh, long wave oscillator trimmer. The other one there was the capacitor. That was a long wave oscillator padder. So that's the trimmer. And now we need to do the same thing. Okay, let's keep an eye on the meter there and we'll adjust this guy and see if we can hear it. What I could do is I could go and do it a bit at a time, but I'll try it. Oh, okay. That seems to be the peak. It's rocket. No, that wasn't the peak. There's the peak. 400 is over there. Obviously it's slightly out. Okay, that's done. That's done. Good. Now they tell us to repeat the previous two steps. So, 160 kilohertz. We're at 160 kilohertz. Let's go back. It's shifted a bit. Now we'll do 400 and go up. And again, it's shifted again is a little bit more. Lock the dial, yep. That's on 400 and that's maxed. And just for good measure, we'll go down to 160 again and try it there. That is spot on 160. Yep. So that is done. We've done the dial adjustment for the long wave. There are two more adjustments to do. Step four, repeat. Step five, on 160, long wave, adjust, what is this? Alignment of the long wave mixer at 160. So. Adjust L17B. So L17B is that guy, but on the other side. So I'm going to try and adjust that. No. That seems to be about as good as it gets. Okay. Let's rock this guy. It's pretty much on 160. Yeah. Okay, that one's done. 375. Set it to 375. 375 kilohertz. Okay. Switch on the output of the signal generator, and what are we doing here? Fifth 5A, alignment of long wave mixes. So 375 kilohertz, 
we need to set the dial to 375. It's going up, going up, going up. Put the volume up. You're hearing something. The volume a little bit lower, so the meter there doesn't deflect too much. And we are supposed to adjust 5A, and 5A is... 5A is actually this one. If I'm not mistaken, let me just check again. Yep, second one. So, peak that. Pretty much peaked. Done. Okay, cool. Get rid of the volume. Repeat operations five and six, right? And now alignment of the long wave antenna. 375, leave it on 375, and we adjust C33 for the maximum. Where's C33? All right. Long wave antenna trimmer, C33, is that guy there. Can we improve that at all? Okay, we've got a little bit out of it, not much. And that, my friends, I think is all there is to do on long wave. Exactly. Okay, you've just seen the long wave alignment. RF alignment for the long wave, including the oscillator and the mixer and the antenna. Long wave has been tuned. So we now need to do broadcast band, and also, of course, the shortwave bands. That's why you've got so many of these things over here. Uh, I guess it's not as scary as I thought it would be. In fact, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and start on the, uh, on the second uh, set, which is the broadcast band. And probably, if there's nothing too dramatic, I uh, will just report back when it's done. Well, I have, in fact, done the alignment on all the other bands. And there really was nothing particularly different. It's just a question of getting the right uh, padders and trimmers. So I decided not to go into too much boring detail on that. But what I've decided to do is I do want to do the FM in a little bit more detail. And then I want to show you what I've done to the cabinet, which actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop this video for now and work a little bit on this. I've got to study the FM a little bit more. And then I'll come back with what will probably be the last video in this series with the FM alignment as well as the uh, cabinet and testing. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.